Hello, Ram55 here, and thanks for tuning in. On today's session, I think it's session 9 now, we're going to be watching Frankie driving an ES44AC for Canadian National as he drags 49 well cars into River Point. He'll be bringing a lot of loaded goods for all the good people up in the community. 49 cars doesn't seem like a whole lot, but uh, these are pretty long cars, so it's a fairly long train. So here he is coming from the northwest staging yard and entering the route and about to enter the uh, River Point yard. He's got a string of four locomotives on the end at the uh, leading edge of this train. He's got the ES44 AC that he's driving. He's got two GP38-2s and an EMD50 I'm sorry, an EMD seven, uh, SD70M-2. And initially when I was loading up these well cars, I had a 53-foot well uh, container on the bottom. But there was one that was missing the... The stuff that makes the, the, the car, it was like invisible. So I took those out and I loaded them up uh, top and bottom with 45 foot uh, containers. So I'm not sure if the textures were just missing or they were faulty or whatever. Because, like I said, there was, uh, and before, there was no corrupt files, no missing dependencies on that car. So I'm not sure what the problem was. But I couldn't stand the way it looked. So we're going to only load the 45-footers. It's going to be a real quick video tonight. Once Frankie uh, is in dropping these containers off in the yard here at uh, River Point, he's just going to take the rest of his train off the map, off the route, to the northeast staging route. Those cars that he's passing now were dropped off earlier by a Canadian National train and uh, it's basically on an interchange track. Those will be destined to head down to uh, Tidewater and they will leave the route either east or west down there. Once again, using my uh, rail driver to operate the train, and I'm starting to get the hang of it. It's still more awkward to operate at really slow speeds and figure out when you need to apply the brakes to couple at a nice controlled speed. But uh, it's coming along, and I really, do, I really do enjoy using it. It's a great way to interface with this simulator. So Frankie's basically going to drive through the end of the yard and cut the uh, string of cars destined for the local community here loose and leave the rest of his train on that inbound track. Then he'll spot those cars on the far right track and on the yard track and then come back and hook up his train and, and take off. So how's everybody doing today? Y'all having a good day? You doing any train spotting out there in the real world? I am very fortunate because right behind my desk where I work, we have a bunch of windows facing the back of the building out onto some railroad tracks. And all morning long, I get to see CSX locomotives come through with some through trains and also do some switching at a yard that's not too far away from the building where I work. So, great way to keep track of what locomotives come through and and uh, watch them do their their shunting. And occasionally we'll see a BNSF locomotive come through and also Mid-Michigan has rights on the track and the Mid-Michigan Railroad will have some switching duties in that yard as well. 
the yard is pretty small. And it seems to me they do a lot of tank cars, uh, hoppers, probably carrying chemicals or plastics, uh, some flat cars. So once again, I use the color code to figure out where I need to make the cut. The blue cars are, stay, are, are destined to stay here at River Point, and the yellow cars will be heading off the route to the, to the east. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to use the car tracker system to figure out where the cars are going. It seems like a great system, but it's also rather time intensive, and then time is one thing I don't have a lot of. And if I can do this with color coordination and that system works, I'll just continue this way. So the CSX inbound intermodal cars will be the yellow ones and the Canadian Nationals will be the blue. So once they're unloaded, I know which uh, railroad will be picking up which cars. And I'll do similar things with the grain cars as well as the uh, uh, tank cars. So it'll be switched visually by the type of car it is and that'll determine which train picks them up. So now Frankie's going to shove these cars all the way back to that uh, track over on the far right side. And those will eventually be dropped off over at the Inamoto yard by the local uh, switcher. my next video I've got a lot of switching to do so I'm probably going to be doing some local switching of those grain hoppers you can see over there on the left I'll do the switching <clears throat> and spotting of these intermodal cars that'll be the first time they've been loaded up at that industry and I also need to do some switching down at the uh, Tidewater Wharf there's some coal cars that need to be rotated through before the next train comes in this yard is that intermodal train took up all of it and more it's hanging over the uh, the western edge of the yard just around the bend there so Frankie's gonna bring the train to a halt the conductor's gonna apply the handbrake now he's gonna go over and grab onto his train and Part the route to the staging yard in the northeast. And I've been watching some real life train videos recently, and I know these things are big, but you really get an appreciation for how mammoth these locomotives are when you see a guy walking along the side of it and his head basically comes up to the lower deck uh, where the, the wheels are basically, uh, just that uh, where that yellow stripe is, that's about where his head would be. That's how massive these things are.
got some more rearranging to do on the uh, the route here. I have always hated this double slip switch that he's going through right here. It is so hard to figure out which way the switches need to be thrown to go in the right direction. So I'm going to monkey around with that, get rid of that double switch, and just make regular turnouts. So we'll kind of reorganize that track a little bit. So Frankie's back on the main line now, heading east. There's not that much rail traffic in, so you don't have to worry too much about blocking the main, so uh, he's not really in the way. So anyways, he's backing up onto his, uh, his train here. without smashing into that uh, train or bringing it to a stop before I uh, get them coupled up. Well, that's pretty darn good. One mile an hour at the, at the hookup. Now we've turned Frankie over to AI control. His first command there is to wait 20 seconds, so I had time to climb this tree to get up here to get the camera set up for this vantage point. And now he's going to depart the route to the east. Like I said, this is going to be a quick and dirty video. It's not very long. I think it's only about... Uh, a little over 15, 16 minutes, something like that. That'll make up for some of the longer ones I do later. So we'll, we'll watch Frankie go around the bend there to all points east on his way probably up to Canada somewhere. And as we watch him disappear into the uh, distance, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate it. Appreciate the comments that people have been leaving. And I'll be posting another video here before too long. So thanks for watching. You guys have a great day. And we'll see you next time.